What is the best Facebook ads tracking software for you to use in 2025? Well, today we'll be going over the one I specifically use when I'm working with Shopify clients specifically. So if you run a Shopify store, this is the video for you that you need between my agency, my students, and just basically what I recommend to people in the community and stuff. This is a software I use, I love, and uh, hopefully today I can kind of break that down for y'all, how I use it and all of those good things. What I use is Triple Well. Triple Well has been around now for I'd say a couple years now. It's uh, kind of came out after High Rose and the other one, which is like Wicked Reports and stuff. Been loving it. Have had nothing but good experience with it. Don't really know about the price too much, to be fair. I don't really pay for it. All my clients, my agency pay for their own subscription and stuff. But usually for us, I recommend either the starter plan or the advanced plan. So for the starter plan, I recommend this for literally anyone running Facebook ads with Shopify and all that good stuff. The advanced plan, I recommend for people that start having recurring purchases and stuff. So, you know, you're starting to scale, sort of spend a couple thousand dollars a day. You're starting to have people come back and buy again in your business. Then we're going to switch over to the advanced plan so we can get the customer cohort analysis, which I'll show in a little bit. Now, just kind of opening up Triple Wall itself. This is like the first thing you see right here is your custom pins. Custom pins are just things that like you specifically pin right here for metrics you want to look at on a day-to-day -day basis. And we'll go over these in a little bit of each of these metrics, but these are the ones that I look at on a day-to-day -day basis just for you know kind of immediates that i want to see now as you start to scroll down you'll have custom metrics these are things that we've actually never set up these are things that just come based with triple wells plan you can see like net profit roas mer net margin ads ncpa and c roas and then as we scroll down further we'll see more specific things like attribution channels, Facebook, Klaviyo, Google Ads, Pinterest. We're only running Facebook and Klaviyo for this. We're not actually spending anything on Google Ads itself. And then we have web analytics below, which is just more of like your website analytics and stuff, bounce rate, search session duration, all of those good things. Then you have all of the metrics for your Shopify store itself. And then you have meta ads specifically. And then they'll also have other ones like Google, email, and um, any other like platforms you may be on then lastly you have expenses here and these are all the expenses that are pretty much taken out of gross revenue uh, from this here we have shipping cogs and payment gateways this particular client makes all of their clothing and when i say makes they they order a couple thousand black t-shirts and then they have a press they press it and then they ship it out so it's pretty low expense uh, business itself now from there, we'll move over to what like a lot of people use these software as far as the actual attribution side. So for me here, this is where I'll go to marketing acquisition inside of Triple Well, and then I'll get this nice little panel here for all of the different channels that we're on. Usually I'll go and source it and just look at Meta itself because we're a Facebook ads agency. So we specifically focus on the Facebook ads side. So in here, we can see our ad account, exactly how we would see the ad account within Facebook ads manager here. We're looking at the last seven days and then we can also customize the attribution model we want to look at. So in my case right here, I use trip attribution. That's the one I recommend for 99% of people right there. You can use total impact for example, but like you just need a little bit more data for total impact to become open. So some people they, they hop on triple well and like total impact is not available for them yet. And then there, there's these other ones, which again, just unique unique scenarios that we use those but for the most part trip attribution is the safe one that you can use and then occasionally we'll bounce back and forth between first click and last click first click is like what are the ads that are generating the first clicks for the business so basically converting cold audience and then what are the ads that are converting people after they're already entered in our ecosystem and sometime this is used in rare scenarios where we're just not really sure yet if there's an ad we want to turn off or we're having issues with gaining more new customers now inside of here we can click on the campaign and we get the ad sets and then we can also click down on the ad sets to get the actual ads for the ad account itself here we'll see the triple reported ROAS right here and then the ROAS Facebook report so you actually can see both of those numbers which is really cool you can also click on purchases right here like the number and you can actually see the specific orders that came through for that particular ad which is also really cool and then the last thing you can see right here is NCPA which is something I really like to look at because this is showing me the ads that are doing really well for acquiring new customers for example this top spending ad has a hundred and eighty five dollar 
a new cost or new customer cost per acquisition, whereas the one right below it has a $63 new cost per acquisition right there. So this one's actually doing a way better job at acquiring new customers versus the top spending ad itself. We can also see other things like AOV, which is cool. Some of y'all already have this reported inside of Facebook, so it's nothing new, but that's also cool to see that right there. Now, as far as when you're making decisions and stuff, you don't want to be bouncing back and forth between do I look at Facebook reported robots or do I look at triple L reported robots? You have to pick one and you make all of your decisions based off of that one. If you jump back and forth between the two, what's essentially going to happen here is you'll have a lot of mixed data because what's going to happen is, you know, like one day you decide to do Facebook, one day you decide to do triple well, and it's, it defeats the whole purpose of an attribution software. And I've seen that so many times where people are like, oh, well, Facebook's reporting well today. So I'm going to use Facebook or Facebook's not reporting well today. I'm going to use triple well data. And it just defeats the whole purpose of using the software. You have to have one North store. You make all your decisions uh, for now outside of attribution is where we start looking at cohorts. Um, I work with a lot of brands that have a lot of, of returning customer revenue. So it's important for me to understand those customer cohorts. So if I click to the left right here and go to customer retention, I can see my cohort analysis here. Now, calling about customer analysis, it actually allows me to see the LTV of a customer over a period of time. So in this case right here, we have you know, first order is $62. So that's basically just my AOV right there. Month zero is like, if I purchase within zero and 30 days of that first purchase. So if I purchase today, October 15th, and I purchase again tomorrow, October 16th, I'm still within that zero to 30 day window. So month zero is just people that are making additional purchases before we go to month one. Month one would be November 15th to December 15th. And then month two would be technically December 15th to January 15th. If I'm looking at the uh, date today, which is October 15th right there. So in this case right here, month one is not like zero to 30 days. That's actually 30 to 60 days right there. Month two is 60 to 90. Month three is 90 to 120 and so on all the way to month 12. Now you can see right here, I have the metric set to LTV all customers i'm turning on cumulative to get this nice consistent number right here and if we look at this we notice that our first order is 62 dollars, and 12 months later our customers are worth 83 dollars for this for us so that's my L our ltv over 12 month period of time right there which is awesome now the next thing that we can look at here is our retention rate so what percentage of our customers we retain on the brand? This is extremely important for you guys who are running supplement brands or MMRR offers, so monthly recurring offers, where you're doing subscription basis here. I want to see what that retention rate looks like over a period of time so we can be more predictable with our revenue. So here, metric retention rates turned on, we're turning off cumulative here, and we can see that after 12 months with this, people are only 0.68% of people are actually staying and buying from the brand again. Whereas here, we can see that within month one and two, we're still retaining about five to 3% of people that are actually buying from the brand. And we're going to see a very slow decline over time. That's okay because it's normal for people to stop buying with this over a period of time. What we want to look for here is where are the huge jumps at? right? So if it was like 5% every day, every month, and then all of a sudden went down to 1% and just declined over that, that's a problem right there. So we need to understand why we're seeing that big dip and how can we counter that with some strategic emails that are going out to those people that just randomly fell off the brand. Now, what metrics do I mainly look at when using these attribution software? So this is where it becomes down to the custom pinned ones that I have at the beginning of the video, where I have our total Shopify sales, total amount of money we're spending on ads. We have our overall ROAS for the business. We have our net profit right here. I love looking at net profit because all of our clients pay us $10,000 a month or 10% of the increased net profit and whatever one's bigger at the end of the month is what they pay us so if we make a business five hundred thousand dollars of net profit in a single month they're going to pay us 50k 
not the $10,000. If we make a business only $43,000 of net profit, they'll pay us the 10K, not the $4,300 um, in that case right there. So net profit for me is very important from just my agency side and stuff like that. Lastly is NCPA. This is the cost to acquire a new customer. You know, this particular brand right now, we're out of range. So we're actually not hitting the target that we want for this particular client. So right now we're really focusing on the new creatives we're testing and new offers we're testing to lower that cost per new customer and this is where having something like a cpa calculator right here allows you to model out different scenarios of different ncpas to see which one works best for you and which one you want to build and scale your business upon because facebook is a attribute is is a, a new customer acquisition tool in that case right there so that's why we focus a lot on that ncpa side now the next thing i like looking at here is the uh, customer cohort analysis of the new customers we're acquiring on a month-to-month -month basis so you can see right here last october 2024 we only acquired 443 customers now so far of october 25 we've only acquired 430 so we're halfway through the month and we acquired about the same so like this we're kind of trending to be about the same from like year over year on that period of time right there but you'll notice throughout the year, it's like we kind of bounce back and forth on this account about the number of new customers we've acquired. So this is where I would want to look at a year over year, how many more new customers we're acquiring on a month to month basis. Obviously, this is where you want to be adding in more new customers year over year, because the more new customers you add and you start to factor in their LTV of like $83, for example, over a 12 month period, that's how overall growth happens. But if you're losing new customers and you're making less new customers year over year and you're not properly monetizing those customers what's going to happen is you're going to see a decline in overall revenue and profits and stuff so it's really important to focus on those new customer acquisition and you'll notice here i don't really look at the actual attribution tool itself that triple well is because to be fair like a lot of times I'm leaving all ads on. I'm not really turning any ads off. And the only time I'm going to turn an ad off, if it takes overall spin, overall spin, and it tanks these numbers right here. So for the most part, I don't even really look at Triple Wall's actual attribution aspect. And I look at it more for these overall numbers right here. And then the customer cohorts right here is the main things I look at on a day to day basis. Obviously, if there's any window where I'm like, I don't know if I should turn this ad off or on, then I'll come and look at the attribution tool right here just to give me a second analysis of what that particular ad is doing for the business now what about other tracking softwares nick you went after triple well for this video that's great i'm not sponsored by triple well or anything like that i'm just giving you all my unbiased perspective on it look there's people that use high rows there's people that use we track for example no hate towards high rows i just much much prefer the triple wells interface uh, triple well was specifically designed for shopify stores so anytime we're working with a shopify store i'm using triple well if we're using if we're working with any other store i'm using hyros hyros is the best alternative to triple well when it comes down to anything outside of shopify now for we tracked i've personally never like used we tracks like internal like attribution tool i just know if we track that we track will use that in conjunction with triple well and we tracked apparently fixes the connection between Shopify and Facebook to where your reporting within the ads manager is almost one-to-one. -one. We've tested this before and I did see a slight lift in the data within Facebook itself, but that's about it. I, I didn't really see much other stuff. So I give we tracked like a, Hey, if you have the extra money, Put that in conjunction with Triple Well. If you're not on Shopify, use Hyros. And then as a must, use Triple Well as a very basic level. Now, I do want to warn you guys of the false lies that almost all tracking softwares report and say. And that is, we push data back to the ad account to make results better. I've used Triple Well, I've used Hyros, I've used Wicked Reports, I've used WeTrack, and none of them has actually push data back into the ad account to make results better. I've never in my last 10 years of running ads had the experience of, oh, I set up triple well, then all of a sudden the ad account got better. That is completely false. And I want y'all to make sure y'all aware of that because all of them use the same messaging. 
hey, when you install X software, it pushes data back to the ad account and it makes you 300% better results. And that's false. I've never seen that once. I'm in groups of people with other engineers at some of these big tracking industries. And when they were confronted about this, no one could specifically say how it works and how does it actually improve results by just installing the software. I'm going to be very clear on there. Just installing the software is how some of these attribution tools make it seem. All you have to do is install this attribution software. It sends data back to the ad account and then results get better. No other actions have to be taken. And that's how it's marketed. And that's how I have never experienced that once. I just want you all to be very clear on that before you buy any of these tools. If though you're buying it for the right reasons, which I showcase in this video to understand better new customer acquisition versus returning customer acquisition, see overall kind of profits and like these key things and also looking at customer cohorts and stuff at just a couple clicks. I think it's phenomenal making better decisions inside of the ad account to improve results i think is phenomenal because again now i can actually see what ads are working and what ads are not working and stuff like that i think this is great and because i installed this stuff and now i can make better decisions yes i will see a lift in results but not from the perspective how they market it of just pressing a button, installing this tracking software, and then boom, results magically get better. And I find that a lot of people think, oh, hey, I'm getting a 1.2 X row ass, Nick. If I install this, will I magically go up to a three? It's like, fuck no, bro. Like you're getting lied to. So I just want to be very clear on that before y'all invest in any of these tracking softwares, because all of them have some level of like marking around that claim right there. And it's very I don't really want to say deceptive, but like it's not the truth around it. So, but yeah, triple is the plan I use. This is the one I recommend. I love it. I haven't really had any other complaints about it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button for new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. My name is Nick Terry. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.